So any discussion on how we get people to switch to Linux and stay on Linux has to deal with the topic of look and feel. Because when you first start Linux and you get through the installation process, the first thing you're exposed to is how it looks. And every distro, or should we say rather every desktop environment, has its own way of presenting itself to their users. Ubuntu does things one way. Vanilla GNOME does things another way. Uh, KDE does things another way. Obviously, there's default XFCE, whatever the hell that is. You know, every desktop environment presents things in a different way. But one of the things we hear a lot in the Linux community, people saying that in order for Linux to be successful, it has to look and feel and work at least somewhat like Windows. And then there's the other camp who talk about how by making Linux work and look like Windows, we're actually making people think that Linux works like Windows when it actually doesn't. So the question I have for us today is, should Linux look like Windows? Now, we can talk a little bit about the functionality of Linux here for just a second, and then we'll move on to the main meat of the topic. Linux isn't Windows. We all know that. If, you, if you're a Linux user, you know that Windows and Linux are two different operating systems. They function completely differently. There's a different learning curve depending on which operating system you're using. So no matter how you dress Linux up, it's always going to function like Linux. It's never going to function like Windows. You can do certain things to make it function more like Windows, things like putting a watermark on the the wallpaper, but it's still going to be Linux underneath. There's still going to be certain things that you just can't change because that's the way Linux works, right? So it doesn't really matter what paint you put on it, it's going to be Linux underneath. So the functionality is not going to change, but does the paint actually help? And that's my question. I'm of the opinion that it can. It doesn't have to though. And I think that the argument on the yes, we should make Linux work like Windows side, is you're treating users like they are new users. And I think that that's in some ways a good thing because you don't want the pain of switching to Linux to be too big. Otherwise, you're risking them going back to Windows. And there's already so many pain points when it comes to Linux, things like finding the right software that you need to use, getting your drivers for your, your stupid NVIDIA card to actually work, all of those things, right, that come along with the actual switching of Linux that can't be changed. So why not give them a little bit of familiarity when it comes to the user interface, things like a start button or uh, icons in the taskbar or icons on the desktop or any of these things that kind of are Windows-like. And I think that for the most part, that's a good thing, simply because it does take a little bit of the foreignness of Linux away so that they can deal with the more important things like learning how to navigate the file system, like finding the software that they need for alternatives that they used to use, things like managing security and their passwords and all the stuff that they'll probably have to do a little bit differently on Linux, they can deal with the important things while not having to deal with having to learn an entire new user interface. So I think that on that side of it, that's a good thing. But anyone who argues on the other side is going to argue that we're basically handicapping their ability to learn something new by feeding them something that's so familiar. And we're fooling them into thinking that Linux is more like Windows than it actually is. So is that true? I think sometimes that that is actually the case because there are some distros out there that go too far. So something like Anduin OS is very Windows-like, right? They've tried their best to make it look in, ex in an experience like Windows. Uh, and, and that's a very legit distro, and, and they've done a very good job. I, I've, I've had words about their distro in the past, but they seem to have fixed a lot of their stuff. So overall, I think that that's a good operating system, but it does try to coddle, I don't know if that's the right word, the new user into experiencing Linux as if it were Windows. Personally, I think that they go a little bit too far simply because they are kind of fooling the user into having that experience when it should be something different. 
A lot of the argument about this stuff, though, comes to things like KDE. Is KDE too much like Windows? And my argument there is no. Anybody who go, anybody who has used Windows and then goes to, goes to use KDE will almost immediately understand that KDE isn't Windows. There, there's it has similarities for sure. It has a menu, has icons in the bar, has a clock over there on the side, has icons on the desktop, things like that. But once you start clicking around just a little bit, you're immediately presented with a whole bunch of options and different applications and things looking different. It's not a one-to-one -one comparison. Yes, it has that initial familiarity, but it's different enough where people will understand that it's different. So that's why I think KDE splits the difference just right. They are familiar enough where people aren't completely overwhelmed by a new user interface, but they're also different enough not to take it too far and fool people into thinking Linux and Windows are exactly the same. Now, for me personally, I think that GNOME takes it too far in the other way. Now, I'm talking about vanilla GNOME, the, the no icons anywhere when you first start up people. Their UI has always bugged me, and I don't really understand why people say it's so good for brand new users. I think GNOME's actually harder to use than KDE out of the box, and at least until you get to the settings and stuff, right? But just initial you're sitting in front of your computer for the first time you've just installed linux which one is harder gnome or kde i would argue gnome is simply because where are the icons right now i have a lower opinion of new users than a lot of people simply because i i, I they don't know anything and that's that that's why they're new users right that they're not dumb they're just new users they don't know what to do now they will probably figure it out given that they're all, you know, they've installed Linux, they've gotten that far, but there's still a hurdle there with GNOME that's not there with KDE or Budgie or XFCE or Cinnamon. There's the hurdle of where are the f***ing icons? How, how are you supposed to get them? Now, GNOME has a tour that I guarantee 90% of the people actually skip. Absolutely, I'm sure that that's the scientific number, but I, I, a lot of people probably skip that thing, and it's not a very good tour. It's just a couple pictures right but if you if you do happen to, to not inhale that information how do you get to the icons on vanilla gnome well there's two ways there's the super key which may be the best way and most windows like experience that you could offer i suppose because a lot of people are used to pressing the windows key which is also the super key to get to the start menu on windows but when i say a lot I, i'm not talking about a majority i'm talking about a small amount of people compared to everybody else who just goes down there and clicks on the, the button right there are no buttons in vanilla gnome except for the activities button at the top which doesn't look like a button it just says activities how are you supposed to know it's clickable so my problem with gnome has always been it's not intuitive enough out of the box to be a good new user experience now is it a horrible one no but i do believe that there's enough of a learning curve there that it provides a uh, it presents an impediment towards people actually getting up and running on linux for the first time that's the reason why i think gnome on ubuntu is actually a lot better it has icons there along the side yes the user experience is completely different than windows but at least you, if you open up a brand new installation of ubuntu you can pretty much figure out what's going on. There's a Firefox icon up there at the top. There's a file manager icon there. I think Thun Thunderbird is, is is in the default dock. I can't really remember. I've been a long time since I've used Ubuntu. But you know, you have four or five icons there. There's a trash icon. You can pretty much expect what that you know actually does. So you can do all of these things and in, in Ubuntu. And while it looks completely different than Windows, you can at least have the uh, you have a sense of how it works, right? Where with, with vanilla GNOME, you really don't. Other desktop environments like Cinnamon and XFC, well, we're just going to bypass XFC because their defaults are all, you know, hair horrible. But like Cinnamon is much more Windows-like than KDE is, in my in my opinion, in that it, you know, it looks and feels more like Windows in some ways. It, it has the bar that's all the way at the bottom, goes all the way across, has a much more Windows-like experience when it comes to, or at least an old-style Windows experience when it comes to the, to the menu. But I don't think that it goes too far. I think that it's just familiar enough where people can kind of have that UI familiarity that I was talking about without thinking that it's actually Windows. And 
once they start getting into the meat and potatoes of of using cinnamon and probably Linux Mint in this case, they'll start you know being able to familiar familiarize themselves more with what Linux actually is than Windows. So I don't think that it goes too far, but it does it is a little bit further along than KDE is. So just to go back to the main question, my answer to this question is that it, it, it I think it's that it's good for new users to have an experience that makes sense to them out of the box. I think vanilla GNOME fails this immediately. I think that Ubuntu's flavor of GNOME does a really good job. I think KDE does a fairly good job initially. I don't know that I would say KDE is best for a new user long term because once they open up the settings panel, they're like, oh my god, what the f is all this, right? So KDE pres presents its other challenges, but the initial user interfaces I think is really good for new users. I think out of all of them, Cinnamon is actually the desktop environment that is more in tune with what new users expect their experience to be out of the box. It's just enough windows to keep them comfortable and not enough Windows to fool them into thinking it's actually Windows. I think it's the perfect experience out of the box for new users. Now, personally, I'm not a Cinnamon user, but I think that if I were to start using Linux today, knowing that, you know, I'm just a noob and I don't know anything, Cinnamon is where I would start. Now, I have my own problems with Linux Mint. I've talked about them, you know, a lot on this channel, but overall their desktop environment I think is probably the best for new users just because it splits that divide of being too much and or you know not too much, just enough, if that makes any sense at all. I, it's been a while since I've actually recorded a video. I don't know that I remembered how to do it. So uh, that is it for this one. If you have thoughts on this, you can leave those in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. That link will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. There, there you'll find a weekly exclusive podcast that I put out for all of my supporters. Basically, it's just me sitting in front of this microphone for a few minutes, just rambling on about whatever it is. This last one that I just put out, I don't know when this video will be published, but the one that I just recorded was all about me f finally finding a home in Hyperland. I've been here for months now and have no interest in changing, which is weird for me. So if you're interested in me talking about that, you can go uh, support me on Patreon or here on YouTube in terms of the membership and you'll get that uh, every week. So that was a lot of words. And I said, like I said, it's been a while since I've actually recorded a video. So um, the words are expected. So uh, thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. You guys are amazing. Thank you so very, very much. Uh, oh, the store. If you want to go to the store and support me there, you can that's at shop at thelinkscast.org. There you'll find the hat and the t-shirts and stickers and backpacks and all sorts of stuff. If you're interested in getting something in return for your support, I have lots of merch shop at the linuxcast.org. Thanks everybody for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time.